Welcome to the Flash and Blade podcast. I'm Siobhan. Yes, we played the parts of the lovers and the friends, and we played the roles until the words came to an end. But the tongues were tied with the passion and the pride. Lose it all when the scream subsides. Let's meet the clucky girl assistants. We have the Brian. Hello. All right, okay. So that's that. Still American? Mm, yeah. Yeah. For now. There's got to be something I can do about this. And we also have, from that bit of America, it's Lilibet but the Wonder Girl. <laughs> Whose microphone didn't pick that up because uh, sensitivity oh. tr- settings are too... Hello? That there. Yes, there we go, Be- a voice. Better, better. Okay. Elizabeth Keep has voice. Um, Hello. It, normally I'm too loud is the problem. Ah. Mm. <laughs> right. Anyway, yes, uh, any idea what I'm doing with the lyrics yet? The song lyrics at the start of the show? No. Okay. I mean, I could say John Hurt 1984, but... Yeah, but you know I've now got a Bluetooth device that I can activate that basically sets off the shock collar. I don't have a shock collar, Yeah, see? Jess got rid of it. I'm uh-huh. annoyed about that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dear. How's your week been, Brian? Eh. <laughs> I can't say any different. <laughs> well, it's St. Patrick's Day here. Yes. I think it's St. Patrick's Day around the world. Yes, but Syracuse does it. Yeah, America takes they, it till its heart, really doesn't it? They really go into it. Mm. I mean, we, we've had, we have green beer. That's an event when that happens. Mm-hmm. They have this whole big parade and everything, and... I'm expecting a lot of people to call into work tomorrow. That kind of deal. <laughs> Strangely enough, so- over, over here in Britain, we don't really celebrate it. No. I wonder, I wonder why. Really? Yeah. The hell you say? Mm, it's a shame because I like Irish people. Um, oh, damn it. My, uh, my family's Irish. So I've got Irish and French now. This is ridiculous. Um, no English, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so a bit of a shitty week, was it? Good week? Yeah. It was a meh. And yeah. a little bit, how has your week been? Because you were on spring break. Uh, I was on spring break. Did you go in for any wet t shirt competitions? Uh, no, not my jam. Uh, okay, fair enough. No. But, I'd, be, I'd be humiliated. Uh... <laughs> Everything started growing south right from the beginning and. That's normal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and anyone who tells you different is trying to sell you something. Yes. Um. But I, yeah, a, a pretty relaxing week. Got a lot of stuff done early in the week. Pr- get productive. Organized the garden. Got the house mostly tidy, mm-hmm. tidy-ish. What's uh, happened to tidier. Rosie? What happened to Rosie? Uh, Rosie. Well, just fed her dinner early. Our time changed on Sunday, yes. last Sunday. Yes, yes, mm-hmm. yep, yep. And she still hasn't quite adjusted to the time uh, change. So she's gone cool. up to for her afternoon nap. But she will probably hear me talking and come down at some point. I, I need to apologize uh, to our viewers. Uh, <laughs> viewers. <laughs> um, I don't normally have the overhead light on, and I've realized that it's showing up that awful portrait of me. Painting of it is great. Now that's it's just... a quite lovely portrait. You just don't happen to like having your picture up. No, that's that's the whole thing. I, the artistry itself, superb. The subject matter is a whole different kettle of ball games. So when I eventually leave here, I'm going to give it to the local cafe to put up. In your honor. Yeah, it's not going to happen. You know that's not going to happen. I suggest Siobhan, they hang it in the weekend. Chair. Yeah, hang mm-hmm. it in the window behind where I normally sit. Yes, there you go. Yeah, I'm not there hoping you go. Well. That won't happen. <laughs> but uh, yes, I hate that portrait. No, seriously, Carol, 
it's great artistry. It's it's just it's me. If it was a, of anyone else, she would love it. Yes. Yeah, I'm sure. Well, depending on who it was. If it was of her dog, it would be up there framed with lights going at it. Oh, damn straight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not quite sure I would make ever get young Trixie Beans to, to put... Oh, we're in the bed. Oh, Mummy's on the computer. I'm so lonely. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Pity the Trixie Beans. Yeah. I had an interesting one. Uh, yes? For me, it was a bit too much. I ended up dead. But, uh, well, apart from talking to you, um, Thursday I had lots to do. I had to go and, uh, well, the cleaner came around at two o'clock. Then I had to go to the doctor to order some prescriptions. And then back to the cafe and the shops and whatever. And then down to Dorking to charge. This was just a little bit too much for me. By the time, end of the day, because I was I haven't been sleeping brilliantly, but so by the end of the day, I'm sort of moving in slow motion and creaking. And then, of course, the following day, uh, I was going up to Basingstoke to visit Sinister and his wife. Um, actually, mostly to visit Mrs. Sinister. Um, <laughs> I screwed that up. Uh, the M25 is the orbital motorway around London. Um... It's it's what Chris Rear was um, singing about when he said the, sang the road to hell. Um, it's basically Britain's largest car park. Um, but if, because it's the orbital around London, everybody has to come out and use it and go back. So they decided they're going to do some roadworks. Um, of course. Of course. Well, it, it, there's constant roadworks going on. But this time, it was big. They shut down both carriageways for between two junctions because they needed to, I think, move a bridge and put another bridge in or something like that. So, of course, I thought this was happening on Friday, and I was right. It was. So I took a back route, uh, a very pleasant back route, but a back route nonetheless, through Guildford up to Basingstoke. Trouble is, that back route had constant roadworks <laughs> with traffic lights, and I'm never going to get there. Uh, the way back was actually all right. I came off before the road closure, went back through Leatherhead and Dorking, and fine. Absolutely exhausted again. Following day, it's in the news that M25 has been shut. At 9 p.m. on Friday, I could have used the motorway and just gone up nice and quickly. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. so that happened. Adam and I were trying to have lunch today, and someone I know decided to plot themselves down and talk to us for an hour. So that was fun. Um, yeah, however... One good piece of news. Uh, we discovered that my fold-up mobility scooter fits in the boot of the car. Excellent. I can't Very do it. Nice. My, I can't do it on my own. I think it's, I decided to take somebody rather strong or two people, but it fits. I'm so, thinking if we get you a ramp, what, and just fold it up and just wheel it into the car. Yeah, and it wouldn't quite work, unfortunately, because you're going to go put it sideways on. Uh, uh, well, if you put the back seats down, you can just... Yeah, but the trouble is my walker, my wheelie walker's on the back seats. Sorry, you weren't expecting a ride in my car, were you? There's too many disabled implements. No, no. Remember, I'm the guy that turned a four-seater, a car from Korea that's a four-seater into a three-seater. Go on. Well, I previously owned for 12 years a car that was made for short Koreans. I am neither. Yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yep. We yeah. had this problem too. Nobody can sit Korean. behind the passenger seat. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, um, no, my car's Korean, Hyundai. And I will be going back to Hyundai. Yeah. Um, so was mine. For, uh, yeah, mine's a lot newer, I should imagine. Um, but well, it was a 2008. It had 130,000 mile, 130, miles on Ooh. it when I turned it in. I yeah. love that car. 
My I'm, car was fantastic. I'm nearly up to 8,000 miles on my car in nearly three years. Um, Bless. Wow. I know. I know. But I'm proud of that because... It's almost but, like she's living in quarantine. It's it's it, Because it's a lease car through the motability scheme, the less mileage you do, the better, if you know what I mean. Plus... Mm-hmm. I don't really have, apart from going over to the shops and whatever, I don't really have much to use it for. It's going to be different now I've got the buggy because I can go somewhere and as long as Adam's there or someone's there, help me take the buggy out. I can go whizzing around and cackling like a maniac. But, um, God, can you imagine Dave on one of those? Uh, yeah, that's why he was told he wasn't allowed to have a um, golf cart <sighs> or or a scooter because he would only put a Nerf gun on the front of it. Yes, he a menace. as one does, as yeah, you're supposed to do. Would have been a menace, so no. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so um, yeah, I don't do that much mileage, which is great because it means I'll get a larger um, payment back when I hand the car back over, which can go towards the next car because mm-hmm. um, that's coming up fairly soon. Two or three months, I'm going to have to go and order a new car. <laughs> What a terrible thing. I have to order a new car every three years. Um, but the thing is, I like my little Kona. It's, uh, but I know the car I'm going for, an Onyx 6, hopefully. And we'll have to wait and see, see how that goes. But, um, mm-hmm. yeah. So, uh, news. 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 There's news. There's a hoo-ha. Oh, there always is. I know. Who's hoo-hawing this time? Now, are are ding-dongs going into the hoo-ha? Very possibly. (laughs) Hoo-ha, by the way, is not spelled H-O-O. It's spelled W-H-O. It's a hoo-ha. Because... Uh, It's a hoo-ha. Yeah, because it is, of course, all about Doctor Who fandom. Ah, dear. Was I ever like... I was like this. I'm sure I must have been like this years and years and years ago when I was young. They've released the um, launch date for the new series of Doctor Who. Which... Oh, right, right, right. Yes, and and people are mad. The same time worldwide. Yeah, which is how it should be. Exactly. And, and it's a streaming service. You can watch it whenever you want. And some people aren't happy with this. The reason for this is that whilst the episodes will be shown on the Saturday evening, it's going on iPlayer first at midnight the same day, at the earlier day, uh, early part of the day. So midnight fr- Saturday, so it turns up. Friday night, yeah, eleven fifty nine. No Doctor Who. Yeah. Saturday, twelve a.m. Yeah. yeah, Doctor Who. Doctor Who. Starting with two episodes and then. Um, and then you can watch them on the Saturday afternoon on BBC. Yeah, but watch some them Saturday the morning. problem people have It could got. be like cartoons. The problem people... I will get this new story out. The pair of you tonight, gossiping and gaggling like geese. Well, here's uh, the problem. It's not a problem. <laughs> okay? The problem with this problem like is mad. not a problem. Well, you see, the thing is, people don't want to have to wait however many hours... They don't Be- have because to wait. they're worried it's... about spoilers. They don't want to have to start till midnight. They, they turn into to pumpkins watch it in the morning. Wake yep. up, have a big bowl of cereal, watch some Doctor Who in your jammies, people. Your jammies. Oh, this is almost unworthy of the diamond logo because Doctor Who's always on in the evenings. Um... <laughs> yes, and it can still be on in the evenings. It's I know. I know this. I've been sitting there going, oh, God, reading all this There's stuff. No, there, this is a non issue. It's That's changed. Like it's an improvement. Everybody well, watches know, at the change. same time. And you can imagine the worldwide yeah. watch parties you could hold online. Yes. And it's a Friday yes. night. So who needs to get up in the morning? The I mean, only I won't people be that up aren't going to be up to watch it at midnight are old people like us. Right, and I don't actually care because I don't care about spoilers. So yeah. spoil away, I don't I'm care. I'm going to be in I'm my jammies watching Doctor Who, eating a gigantic bowl of cereal, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. making like it's 1984. Hey, Brilliant. Um, I'll watch it at midnight because I'm around then. But seriously. Yes, right, yes, because you're nocturnal. There are yeah. petitions. 
Oh, bless. There's always petitions. If there weren't petitions, would people be happy? If they didn't have something to be unhappy about, they wouldn't be happy. Well, and we all know how how Russell T Davies, you know, he is, deals I with guarantee all this. you he's in He's his... going to move it back to the Thursday now so that <laughs> <laughs> they have a special room up at Bad Wolf. Uh it's soundproofed. It's where they put Russell in when he's hooting too much and having too yes. much laughter. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because this is exactly what he wants. Of course it is. Everybody, first of all. He has one of these. Yes. Yes, he does. First of all, everybody's talking about his show. Exactly. Secondly, yep. everybody's talking about exactly what time his show is going to be mm -hmm. live. Salute, this is Mr. the greatest free advertising the world has ever known. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And they're all going to tune in to watch it simply because they're pissed off. Well, no, they'll watch it anyway. But oh no, they'll watch it because they're pissed off just to get madder. God. Yeah, yeah, no. It, it it's it's shown people oh, who are my mad years in fandom. about a show or something watch that show just to get madder and write down little little things about it. Oh my yes, years sir. in fandom, and it's it's still the same. It's just different media. Yeah, it's. Nothing changes. We'll turn, civilizations rise. We'll turn, civilizations fall. Okay, related. I got... I don't think we are. Remember? Yes. Oh, all right. Uh, remember when I went to Barto, Sci-Fi Barto? Yes, yes. And I mm -hmm. said that there was an adorable, like, local Doctor Who group? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Uh, they're called the Guardians of Gallifrey. Oh, we like that. And... I they sent out to everybody who signed up on their little clipboard at the I remember you saying yes. I thought yes. They sent a complimentary copy of their newsletter. Oh bless. Uh Am I in it? It is. You're not. No, I didn't think so somehow. Um it is the most adorably 1990s. Oh. Is it A5? Is it A5? Uh, it's electronic, but oh. if they printed it, it would be. Okay. I'm, um, I'm here for the A5 zines. And the, the key thing, I mean, it's lovely, lovely design. The key thing is their next meeting and the, the, the details about that, yeah, including yeah. a map. Uh -huh, that's useful. Yes. And, um, and it, there's an interim editor who's asking if anybody wants to be the actual editor. Isn't that a lovely fandom thing? Are you, are you tempted? The way you said that no. sounded like you were. Not the at all. I didn't these think so. People have. No, but no, this is this is proto fandom. This is this yeah. is you know this it's is yeah. I was the assistant on something and got stuck being the editor because the real editor didn't want to do the job anymore. And it's anymore probably for before reason. anybody's got themselves airs and graces. A and it's well, there's some news. Oh, uh, clearly, not. people went to. Um, yes, all right. Uh, the uh, like San Diego Comic Con or something like that because there's right. reports back. And then there's a lovely section called Cloister Bells, mm -hmm. where uh, it's actors who've passed. Oh, from Doctor Who, isn't it? So, and then the, the information about their meeting, and then a bit of fan fiction. Okay, do you want to give the um, give them a shout out? What their name is and how they get it, how people can get it. Um, yeah, it's a, it's they're called the um, Gallifrey. It, the newsletter is called the Gallifrey Guardian, and the group is called That's the Guardian of Gallifrey. Yes, um, and it is. Let me see if they. Their tagline is all the news that is temporally fit to print. Oh, very nice. Um, I approve. Yes. Just uh, the right amount of cheese. Yes, it's lovely. So, uh, yeah, Guardians of Gallifrey, I'm sure they've got a Facebook page. Um, and they're the local Doctor Who group. But that is, I looked at that and went, oh, this feels like, like, 1990s Can you get involved? I don't, I don't mean involved as in editing or this, that, and the other. Oh, like, no. Things like um, meetings I'm, and whatever. 
Uh, maybe. Yeah. Their next one's in Orlando, and that's... I don't know. Uh... Uh, like an hour away and awkward to get to. Uh, you know, it's kind of a pain in the butt to get to. Fair enough. Um, but uh, it's it's lovely. It was lovely to get that because I was like, oh, this feels like... And I don't mean this in a disparaging do you remember when way. The, do you remember when the terrible, terrible Zodin started out? Yes. Yeah. It feels... it's an It's a proper old school fan group with a proper old school fan newsletter. I think um, that's magnificent. Which is lovely. I think that's magnificent. I think we're gonna have to that's get one. That's great. Of, we're gonna have to get that's one. Fantastic. Of the, we're gonna have to get one of them on this, on here, to talk about how the group. Maybe came the up. interim editor. Maybe <laughs> just to talk about how the group came about, what they get up to, uh, and and. Now we can certainly ask. I mean, well, feel free. They'd be well, somebody would be welcome on here as long as they got a camera and a microphone. Um, don't tell them they'll get any members because of this um <laughs> the bloody rpg's got more bloody viewers than we have <laughs> hey it just makes me laugh. i attribute that to a lot of the how do i videos all right okay yeah that's fair enough it doesn't have the rest of us in it in that would you care to tell people what happened in last week's enthralling episode of epistopic um interfaces. well lazel decided to tank the the campaign and <laughs> mm, you see no, normally no, when, she... when when i role play it i normally screw things up for everybody not this time no 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 this time it was lazel you guys are just like you know moving the dot around you know one Lazelle, week he has Lazelle's it one Retta. week you have it one week she has it Lazelle is Retta, Teak is Jess. Just so we, in case we and, mix lines um, up. Let's see what happened. Well, they went to meet the mayor of uh, the the leader of the Knights the Templars. City of Stonewall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, um, things didn't go well. Oh dear. Yeah, there was a little personality conflict there that ended up in somebody being choked. Vader, uh -oh. Vader choked. Vader um, choked. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Retta is Retta has put her character deliberately on a path of self destruction, and unfortunately, we're going to suffer the fallout. <laughs> uh, it's going to be spectacular. So we got to the point. It's a case of well, we can't go any further. Brian hasn't got a combat situation for this. <laughs> He's going to have to go and make one up. It's like, oh my god, there's going to be 30 guys coming out trying to kill you, and I don't have a map of a cathedral <laughs> right now. Uh, I found one after the show. Go to Thaco Gaming, that's T-H-A-C-0, um, gaming on YouTube, and watch last week's um, Tales of the Astral Sea, because when it hits that point, it's hilarious. Yep. You, you basically and there's a new episode coming up this Saturday. Got me going, oh God, oh God, oh God. You've got Jess, who wasn't actually involved, sitting there. Just, just dying. Dying, egging on from the sidelines. And Retta. Pure Retta. I think that's the best way of putting it. Yeah. I can't wait to see where this is going to go. It's um, badly. Oh, yeah. 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 But that was superb. She was... I take my hat off to Retta. She's probably one of the best role players I've ever played with. So that's an honor. She's good. Yeah, man. Told you guys coming in, she was good. Yep. Yep, there's no two ways about that. Ah, uh, dear. She wouldn't have let Ben Grimm get killed. Anyway, um... Haven't forgotten. Mm, haven't forgotten. He's not dead. He's yeah, I, just it, in hell. Yes, I know. But she wouldn't have allowed that. Mild uh, inconvenience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So uh, that's next Saturday at 8 p.m. No, hang on. 8 p.m. East uh, UK time, 3 p.m. Eastern. Yeah, or hang on, hang on, hang on. 3 p.m. Eastern, 9... Uh, yeah. It'll be 7 p.m. for bit, me. What's the math on this? No, I've worked it out. 7 p.m. They're four hours ahead. Yeah, so 7 okay, p.m. Okay, so 7 p.m. Eastern. That is really going to screw up my day. Do you know that? I have enough trouble getting here for the normal time, not another hour before. 
you could start a petition. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, I walked head first straight into that yeah. with my eyes wide open. Yeah. Uh, I, hate, I hate you so much. <laughs> Oh, Bakrai. We forgot to mention uh, some people leaving us. You saying that with the cloisters um, made me realise. We've lost Michael Chaste. The Valiard. He's no longer with us, sadly. A hell of an actor. My God. And if you watch the original version of Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, he plays the Peter Quillam um, role. The role that in the film... Benedict Cumberbatch played. Um, he's superb in that. Mind you, that's just a superb production all round, quite frankly. And then um, we also lost Pamela Salem. Yes. Who, who was in Doctor Who quite a bit. She was Faroon. No, she wasn't. But she wasn't Faroon. That was somebody else. Uh, oh my, she was Leah Th Thea Ransom in Fenric. She was Professor Rachel Jensen in um, Remembrance of the Daleks. And, of course, she was Toos in Robots of Death, where it's a case of, please do not throw hands at me. Hands at um, me. So I, this, there's a slight strange thing to this, because I, I put a twos, one less than threes. You know, farewell, low hand throwing one. I, I'm hopeless at writing out things like that. Put that on Twitter. It's been followed and liked, sorry, it's been liked by 20 Chinese bots. I don't normally get Chinese bots, but this particular post, every few days there's another one. And I'm thinking, what the hell? What keyword triggers on that? It sounds like a Facebook dating app. There was a Facebook dating app? Oh, there currently is. Oh my On your kidding. phone, if you go to no. the Facebook app and go into dating, there is a dating thing for it. Oh, my God. It's hilarious. Sorry, I, I, sorry dating apps are not for me. I, to be perfectly no. honest, with, dating is not for me. I've given up on all that nonsense. Um, yeah. I've, I've I've lived alone for too long. I'm too far. I'm far too set in my ways. I would be useless as anybody's partner. Um, so I suppose people. Might, yeah, it's not something I've ever done, but I suppose some people like it. So uh, anyway, I don't know. what I are we had to import one? <laughs> Yeah, but you have to keep sending it back for it to be tweaked. I know, don't you? I know. Well, you got the mail order bride, right? Uh, we're not quite sure it. what it was, if I'm honest with you. <laughs> However, it was faulty. <laughs> um, <laughs> right, and now for the world's of BBC Television's Doctor Who, it's Doctor Who. Before we start, a quick hello to the bots. Uh, Drapsnats. Oh. Drapsnats there. Tarse is one. I've never seen Tarse before. Hello, Tarse. Uh, Perhaps uh, they've joined you from your Twitter. Donk7. I remember that one from last week. Mm, and Mark Zink. I think that's another regular. We've got a regular audience of bots. <laughs> anyway. Ah, oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Uh, a second Doctor Who. We're not sure. It might be, it might not be, but oh, my giddy aunt. Lance the TARDIS sideways on in the snow. Are they further down the Himalayas? Because 
we've just come from the Himalayas. This is the Himalayas with no snow and looking suspiciously like Wales. Suddenly, lower down the mountain, if it is the same mountain, it might, might well be, actually. Um, no, it's in Britain. Um, but it's lots and lots and lots of snow. Uh, because uh, so, uh, one, one, one year spring didn't come. And uh, anyway, they, they Doctor Who and his plucky girl assistants, Jamie McCrimmon and Victoria Waterfield, go into this dome, which is actually a lovely Georgian house inside. And they've got a computer that's um, having... They rely on too much, to be fair. And um, one of the archaeologists, well, the archaeologist of the party, has gone up and he's, 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 he's found an ice warrior in the uh, ice, strangely enough. And it's quite bizarre. He calls it an ice warrior and everybody calls him an ice warrior from now on in Doctor Who. Doesn't matter what story, it's an ice warrior. Even the ice warriors refer to themselves as ice warriors. I mean, that man's got naming power. He do, well, you see, he it, branded yeah. it. Arden, his name was. Remember that, Arden. He took out the trademark. He's so dead. And every time they say it, he gets money. No, he's dead. His estate gets money. There you go. The estate doesn't actually exist yet. Are you sure? Yeah, it's in the future. This. Just I'm just saying. saying well, maybe, yeah. Maybe it's retro. Ah. <laughs> So what we've Retroactive. got is, is six episodes of them trying to work out what powers the Ice Warriors ship, which is stuck in the glacier, because it's the second ice age. The people in the base are basically using a device called an ionizer uh, to melt the ice, but not too fast in case they cause flooding. And, of course, heat, and depending what the motors are in the, in the ship, um, boom. Um, the yeah, base they're afraid of causing like a nuclear reaction. The base commander, big surprise here in season five, is a little bit is going a little bit loopy. Um, no. Yes, I know. Uh, yeah, we'll see that again, Fury from the Deep, Wheel in Space. So, um, Brian, you didn't watch this. No, it's not available on BritBox. Which BritBox? Shame on you. However, from now on, I hate to say it, it's, if you don't find it on BritBox, iPlayer it. That's what I did. I'll go iPlayer if it's not on BritBox, but At I didn't it, this it, time. That's all right. It's okay. That's... I'm paying for the goddamn BritBox. I'm going to watch the goddamn <laughs> BritBox. Might I suggest you? I, just... I watch one show on this damn streaming <laughs> thing. Yeah. Doctor and Who is don't... what you got it for in the first place. Yes. One show. One damn show. Okay. Ripbox, let me down. Do you do, 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 you, want, do, you, want, do you want to just take a break for a second, a little rest? I'm fine. And, you I'm know, okay. I'm fine. Compose I'm yourself. Not, I'm not angry. And a little bit, and I will do talking. Ripbox. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, we haven't discussed politics yet. Oh, oh we've let the side down. No, we're not going to. Uh, right, a little bit. The Ice Warriors. Yes. Um, yeah, I first encouraged, in, encountered it uh, via the book, the Target book. And indeed, after I watched it on the electric television, I read the Target book again. Um, first time you've seen it more than once? What's the score here? I, I think I've seen it before, but it would have been a very long time ago. So this was essentially a fresh viewing. Oh, that's nice. Um, enough that... I started watching it because um, I have it on, on DVD uh, back from when you and Dave were doing the WhoCast. And, um, <laughs> oh, those were uh, the days. Yes. Um, so pulled, pulled out those. Running two those weekly DVDs. podcasts at once. Recording, editing. That's why I ended up saying today, you're going to have to edit. I can't do this. Yes. Uh, so I started by having the commentary on. And then realized very quickly, I didn't know the story enough to watch it with the commentary on. Um, and it was very nice commentary. I'm so sure it was. It. But um, uh, it it was difficult to follow the story. And I was like, I don't, uh, okay, I, I've got to actually watch it properly. Um, so I, I enjoyed it. I think 
it's six episodes. Yep. It was the right length. And normally I complain about mm-hmm. six episode stories and think they could have cut at least one. Mm-hmm. But I think this was the right length because it let the story breathe. Mm-hmm. It has really good cliffhangers at the end of each episode. Mm-hmm. So you want to come back and watch the next one. Um, And the two animated episodes, which is, I think, two and three. Yes. Are really well done. Interesting. There were complaints at the time. Well, you know, people are going to complain about everything. That's well, what well, they like, do. Like, like, like when Doctor Who's coming back on. Exactly. Petition. Exactly. It, it, you you it, can put out a petition for that. <laughs> if they're not complaining, they're not happy. But I liked it because, and I think in the animation's black and white, just like the episodes. Yeah. Uh, and I did watch the making of the animation thing, the short on that. Mm-hmm. And they really thought things through. Like they thought about what are the limitations? What could they have done at the time? Versus what does the script say they're supposed to be doing at this point? Mm-hmm. What could they have actually done in costume in studio? Let's create that so it you, matches you see, and that's, melts. see, that's a different mindset to modern day animations. Where it's a case of full color, widescreen, you know, if there's a scene that we think might not work too well, we're going to cut it. For example, the rumble tumble machine in Macra Terra. Um, and there is a debate being had about whether the animations should be faithful to the TV shows. Brian, you do the honors, please. Yeah, I got him. Thank okay. you. Um, hey, wow, that that's great, terrific. Thanks so much. Bye. Uh, you see, this is what happens when you say hello to bots. What was I saying a little bit? Uh, debates and animation. Yes, about whether you should go allow the animators the chance to express themselves and try and make it how they think. It would have been presented nowadays, so to speak, but in animation, mm-hmm. or whether well, it, it should stay faithful to what was on the telly at the time. There's there's I, quite a debate about it. I think it's an interesting debate. Mm-hmm. I think uh, animation does give you the opportunity to do things that you couldn't do otherwise. Mm-hmm. And Doctor Who is a wonderfully imaginative show and creative mm-hmm. show, mm-hmm. often um, limited by its budget yeah. or the technologies of the time. And the amount of time or they both. had. And, right, and the amount of time they had and filming conditions and all of those kinds of things. And their ambitions almost always <laughs> outran their their actual ability. But isn't that it. wonderful, though? Yes. They're yes. always trying, always trying to push They're it. They're always trying. And this is a deeply ambitious <clears> story. <throat> it is. The sets are huge. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they look pretty good. Um, there's a few times where, because the Ice Warrior costume is very big and very bulky and clearly very difficult to move around in, um, where the actor bumps into something on the set or where there is, yeah, it just can't be helped. Um, or where, uh, Victoria is being chased and she has to run away in the slowest method possible in order to be caught. help me. (laughs) Noise. I did like I did like Victoria um in her conversation with Jamie when he's like, Hey Victoria, how about those characters in the very short nineteen sixties outfits? Would you ever wear something like that? I mean, that's not how he phrased it, but that's what he meant. And uh she's like, um, no, I wouldn't. And we're done with this conversation. <laughs> Prim little Victorian miss. Um, uh, it was excellent because she was just like, no, no, we're not talking about this. And we're moving on. Here's a thought for you. Um, the ice warriors themselves. For a start, they look different. Yes. Different ice warriors have a different look to them, a different helmet, a different height. They're not cut cookie press. Cookie right. cutter. They're not, Sorry. Yes. Yeah. Yes. They're uh, not interchangeable aliens. Yeah. Are, are there different Martian clans? Uh, we'll, I'll come to that, Brian. 
Um, okay. Believe it or not. And um, in this story, the characters of the Ice Warriors were allowed to come forward a bit. And I honestly think the Ice Warriors is their best outing because of that individuality. Seeds of Death, they've introduced the Davros figure in the, in, in, in the Ice Lord who does all the talking for them. Um, mm -hmm. And then Curse of Peladon, interesting again. Oh, big surprise, they're the good guys this time round. Uh, Curse, uh, Monster of Peladon, if you stay awake long enough, you'll find out that they're the bad guys. And then you've got the stuff in the modern day series. As for clans, Brian, um, the New Adventures, Virgin New Adventures did investigate, uh, sorry, I say investigate, did delve into um, Ice Warrior history. Uh, because Professor Bernie Summerfield, good old Benny, who we'll be talking about in a moment, um, was an expert on Martian archaeology. So, and there was one book, especially God Engine, which has a trek across Mars and through the old Ice Warrior cities. Yes, there were castes. There was the warrior caste. There was the religious caste. There may have been another caste, uh, but uh, they're not Mimbari. Um, okay, that that's where I was going with that right now. Yeah, uh, but um, it's... I honestly think this is their strongest showing because the actual warriors themselves were allowed room to breathe. They didn't end up with a particular mouthpiece. Varga, yes, he's the mouthpiece. He's the leader. But they've all got... There's just that little bit of individuality amongst them which just brings them... It's, In it's better. this, they don't have a plan. No, they just want to escape. It's only when they find out the bits and pieces it's a case of, we could conquer this planet. Yeah, I yeah, mean, they, they landed the, the, uh, the backstory to the thing is they landed mm. and a couple of them came out of their spaceship and immediately there was an avalanche yep. and they all got frozen in the snow. That sort of thing will happen when you land on snow, quite frankly. Yes. They should have thought it through. Um, and and then they got defrosted. Mm -hmm. uh, well, one of them did and then, then he went around and defrosted the others. Uh, and... They, as you said, they, they return. They want to return to their ship. They want to get off the planet because they've been stuck here forever. And then they're like, "Well, why are the humans so interested in our ship? What are they doing? Yep. What's up with that?" Yep. Uh, and so then, the, but it isn't like we have arrived here with a plan. No. And I think most of the other Ice Warrior stories, they have a plan. It, to, to be fair, it is almost a battle of wits each side having to improvise again not, yeah. and not having all the information they need to be able to act conclusively and not trusting each other because if they just talked they could both get what they wanted yeah well no varga decided he wanted to conquer earth because mars was dead it's got the did did it's not yeah, we know it's not but there's still ice warriors up there Sorry, Martians. So indigenous Martians. Um, yeah. The Martians have a very fine history, mainly because of the new adventures. Going forward to past Galactic Federation times. Um, it's quite interesting. And I, I recommend God Engine. If to anybody who likes Ice Warriors, you can get your hands on a copy of God Engine. Good luck, by the way. Um, give it a read, because it is, it is good. It's very good. Especially, like I say, if you like your ice warriors. So, there. Thumbs up for this one? Yes. I, although, there were a couple of times where uh, it devolved into just all the characters yelling at each other at the same time. Mm. Um, Derek instead of, like, there'll be moments where we're just all yelling for no reason. Um... And I do like the denouement. Well, denouement. Not just the denouement. Denouement. The, um, denouement. Yeah, but that's not what it is. <laughs> uh, it's it, it's the beginning of the resolution, I guess. 
um, where the leader, who's a bureaucrat, essentially, which is why he's overly reliant on the computer. Yeah, plus he's um, out to make a name for himself. He is, but he's also way out of his comfort zone. Oh, totally. So as so every time he's asked to make a definitive decision, whereas uh, we find out at the end, he's always written his own reports. He's always done his own. Yeah, because that's where he's comfortable. That's where he's good. Yeah. And he's been Peter principled up to this, and he's completely out of his depth. And the... Yes? What does Peter principled mean? Oh, the idea that people are promoted... Um, when they're good at their jobs, they're promoted to their uh, level of incompetency. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so the and he didn't he doesn't like people who argue with him. He doesn't like people who are creative thinkers. Nope. Everything's got um, to be come through the computer. And yes, and it's got to go through the computer, and the computer is a computer. Um. It's not even a particularly good computer. Oh, it's, hush. It's just an overgrown calculator. Yes. Yeah, it's pretty crap, isn't it? Um, uh, yes, I know you're there. You're damned. And they've ruined a very nice drawing room to put it in. It's just a set in BBC. At the BBC. I'm just saying. It would look nicer as a drawing room and they'd have better it, results. I'm not sure if that was Riverside or Television Centre. It was probably Television Centre by then. I don't know. Mm, no, they was said this one it, of the 12 sets that BBC traditionally has, or is it? Uh, well, I did watch the behind the scenes on that, too. I haven't got to. Well, well, I have somewhere. They thought it through mm. and said uh, they thought about, like, how... Um, in sort of World War II, commanders set up in big traditional stately homes. Yes. Okay. Yep. And they thought, okay, well, if glaciers have invaded, we do want this to look sciency and sort of futuristic, but they wouldn't have, because this happened quickly, they wouldn't have purpose built something for it. They would have adapted something that already existed. That makes perfect sense. So they make it look like <coughs> uh, that's what, when Victoria comes in, it's a very traditional looking <coughs> sort of hall, like a Victorian type hall or Georgian or whatever. And she comes in and she's like, oh, it's, it looks like my house. I was going to say, she's familiar with it. She feels familiar. Yeah. And then they walk in this room and it's very, the, the paneling on the wall is very traditional. And then in the middle, there's all these sort of futuristic chairs and big, brown computer thingy and um so it's it's this futuristic setting but set in a very familiar building mm -hmm. uh which is clever set design i feel oh okay because it gave they could have just made it a big white room they didn't but they didn't they they thought about the lore of the place mm. which which is good so, Ice uh, Warriors, it's out there yeah. um, on the iPlayer. I really do recommend it. The Ice Warriors best outing. Um, I, yeah, I love, I love Curse of Peladon, but um, going back and seeing these, seeing this, it's a case of, they're actually, there's more to them here than we'll see. They've just become foot soldiers after that. We need to send our love to Dr. and Mrs. Sinister. Absolutely. And so we're going to be, um, yeah, you're not going to be able to read that. That actually says World's Bestest Poet Volume 1. I'm able to read that. Yeah, the people on, on watching this won't be able to. Yeah. Why does it flip yours? I don't know. I've never worked that one out. Fame. I'd love to have a go at being on the one show. I'll be slipping on a soda while sitting on the sofa. I won't be the main guest, but I'd definitely be the best, and in any set of graphs I'd generate the most laughs. We'd talk about my life, and jokes would be most rife. There might be serious bits too, but hopefully only a few. They'll probably put me on last, and it would probably be a blast. I'd chat with the lovely Alex Jones, or maybe one of her clones. Even if I was just on BBC Two, it would still be a dream come true, because humans, who can blame us for wanting to be famous? Andrew Summersgill, world's greatest poet. Bestest poet. Sorry, Andrew. That's your Doctor Sinister for world's you. World's bestest poet. Yep. Is that? That's he got recognised recently. Is that from what I hear? 
he was out and about and someone recognized him as that. I don't know. I have no idea. Hang on, I've got to move the Death Star. I don't know why I keep this. It doesn't work anymore. It's supposed to light up. You shouldn't have to say! Doesn't work anymore. She's got the whole world in her hands. <laughs> it's supposed to light up. <laughs> I see you, Trixie Beans. So, all right, Ice Warriors, go forth, watch it. Brian! Yes! Tomorrow, people, do talking. Ah, uh, tomorrow, people, the Medusa stream. How camp? You know, camp, as, camp level, as please, Brian. Camp level. Hmm? Camp level. I mean, the camp on this was pretty, pretty high. It was, wasn't it? It was sort of up there. Camp Android. Yeah, yeah. That's David Prowse. Oh, interesting Darth fact: Vader. the Android is David Prowse of Darth Vader fame. Is there an echo? I don't know. I, I wasn't listening to you. And, <laughs> and their choice when when they saw Android, their choice for costume was loincloth and pasties, I believe. Oh, God. It gets even better when you realize the disco clothes Peter was wearing. Right, so, second Tomorrow People There's story. an issue. Introduces the concept of the time travelers, in this case, Peter. Um, they, they go with the guardians, if you like, guardians of time. Um and uh well he's not really a guardian of time he's more like a whiny whiny of time. bitch yeah but um yeah, he gets he captured and some tomorrow people go to try to save him Jedekai is there again in a different body because it's a shape-changing robot of course as we all know um and... shape-changing robots are wont to do yeah yes um and frankly that's all i've got to say about it <laughs> except well, there... except did kenny get anything to do no. no, no, he no. got locked in, in literally locked in a closet at one point. Yeah. Poor Kenny, yeah, he gets uh, the babysit change. <laughs> is it just me, or is the double act of Jedekiah and Count Rabowski, or whatever his name is, was there like a lot of gay subtext on that, or was that just me? Uh, a little bit. We need to discuss the whole gay subjects and the tomorrow people thing. Um, yes, There's a lot. There's a lot. And well, you will see a lot of young boys like, not wearing much. And disco clothes. Yeah, <laughs> you'll you'll see a lots of young boys not wearing much during this. Make of that what you will. Yeah. Can I just? I mean, it, was um, a, it was a great double act. I had a lot of fun watching them. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, this Jedekiah actor. No, no disrespect meant, but was a lot better than the previous Jedi guy. Which actor. is strange because they bring well, the. I have a. I question the 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 sanity of having the villain for the very next arc being the villain from the very last arc, just in a new body. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oddly enough, the original Jedi guy does come back in future in, in a future episode, but he doesn't have much to do. Uh, not, not the Perhaps the actor he... doesn't have much to do. They make full use of, his, of the character's shape changing stuff. Um, wow. There's a great book called The Visitor. It's an original Tomorrow People book, uh, which features the original team: Stephen, John, Kenny, Carol. And it's a great little book. I absolutely adore. I remember reading it and getting it at school, and it, oh, I absolutely loved it. Um, I ended up buying it again. I got it. But uh, I, I I would recommend that because it's if you can get it, probably find it very cheaply on eBay. The Visitor, Tomorrow People, The Visitor. Um, again, it's written for the younger reader, but it's a good story. And considering it's the original Tomorrow People, it's quite good because it sets up a few things in it. You know, like he's, he's testing things out. What do they do? What don't they do? And it's good. Um, indeed, uh, I don't know if it's Colonel Masters, but there's certainly army uh, and intelligence in that book. And so that could lead forward to future Tomorrow People stories on the telly. Um, 
I'm sorry, I, I didn't watch it because I've already watched it. Uh, I, I'm going to watch the next one because I think the next one's The Vanishing Earth, isn't it? It is. Yeah, it's a good one. That That is a good yeah. one. I like it. The Spydron! The Spydron! I'm waiting for Rome. Oh, you love. Oh, you. Hey, that's, regardless of what you say, that was peak tomorrow people one. That, that one episode arc. Story. I'm going to have to teach you the British uh, things for this because it just makes sense. You got a story. You got episodes in the story. Story arcs, not so it's much. An arc. Not so much. Occasionally, for example, Jedekiah, that's a comeback, but it's not so much an arc. It's not so much an arc. Don't call it a comeback. He's been there for years. Uh, where did they leave him? Uh, this yeah. time was um, uh, Mercury. They oh, left yes. him on Mercury. So how the hell he gets back to Earth, I don't know. But he demands just to get back to Earth. Uh, Aliens. What? <laughs> it's got to be. Wow. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I didn't do it right. Aliens. I do wish Carol had more to do. Yes. Because if she's like the second person who joined, at least in the previous story, she was the one they kind of sent out for first contact. Which kind of mm -hmm. makes sense. She's very approachable. She's very sweet. She's very She's empathic. old enough that nobody's going to question her presence in places, but she's young enough that nobody's going to expect her to, like, And be yet they sent John to tell Stephen's mother. We're going to get yeah. hung up on that. I know we are. Oh, yeah. But yeah. here, like, she just gets kidnapped and stays kidnapped. Now, she does do some thinking. And I appreciate she that. Meet, she's the one that meets Peter. Yes. So. And, and also, something that just felt weird is where he, like, it, it it was interesting that he's from the future, right? And And he's like, oh, you guys, apparently he's a history expert who knows nothing about history, but never mind. Um. He's like, oh, you guys are still the underground, blah, 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 blah. Like, oh, it's really cool to meet you. And then he realizes that she might get killed here in the future. It's a bit strange, and really, he's... because you're an English teacher and you're American. Um, what? You're an English teacher, but you're American. Y yes. We speak English and read English. I would question that. Uh, I think we've improved it. Oh, oh, you do, do you? We got you? rid of the extraneous letters. Did you ever come up with a great word like bollocks or gobshite? I don't need no, to. No, no. We've got the Scots to do that for us. Well, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. The best insults come from Scotland. They are amazing at it. I, I love I, it I bits. believe the orange hair shit gibbon is mm. currently still my favorite. Though I still like fuck fake blonde clown snake. Ooh, that is a good one. It's a John Stewart. I mean, you know, you can't. Yeah. Well, well he's American. Yes, and on the other hand, we have reintroduced to the uh, second person familiar plural. Yes, that. Y'all. That's the second or person from familiar. From up north, use guys. Mm -hmm. Hey, use guys. Exactly. I'll never do that again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm walking here. And we've actually added one, which is all y'all. Oh, dear all y'all is a good one. Which is not just you plural, but a whole group of you plural. Do you know what is what? What's really bad is it makes sense in my head. It does. It actually makes it does. Really, really good sense. Yeah. Uh, we don't have a useful you plural except you, which is ambiguous. Y'all is not ambiguous. You lot. It means yeah, it's basically you lot, but it's one word. Y'all. That's just laziness. No efficiency. <laughs> anyway. So why we cut the? It's why we cut out the you in color, and armor. Yeah. That well that. that we did that, you see. So they're all distracted by that, so we can have Z's in words that previously Zed. had S's and we Zed. Have Scrabble. Yes. Z. Plus there's the whole Z. aluminium thing. And zero. What's wrong with zero? 
Nothing's wrong with zero. Right then. So what are you moaning about? Exactly. Quite. I'm going to start a petition. <laughs> if you'd like us to start a petition on whatever <laughs> subject you fancy, write it down yeah, on an envelope and... Don't encourage the bots. <laughs> <laughs> They're the only ones watching. I know, but they will. They will tell you to write petitions. Um, anyway. No. Um, something that did I found weird in uh, in this episode is where they're in the cages and he recognizes she's from the past and who, not exactly who she is, but what group she belongs to and says to her, you know, like, oh, no, we've got to get you out of here. If you die here, then like thousands of people might not exist in the future. That's what happens when you start pissing around with time travel. Well, here's the thing, though. Mm -hmm. It's really not because of her powers or she's going to train people or whatever. It's specifically because she's female and he's talking about her progeny. Because mm -hmm. he's already brought up the fact that she may be the mother of an mother entire of, line of tomorrow of people. people. That's just kind of weird and creepy. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure why. Because he's right. But I, it, I think it introduces the idea of a, a concept that we do not otherwise have in the show, at least at this point. Well, Which is well, that if you want more tomorrow people, the tomorrow people are going to have to... Well, again, it's like other. Doctor Who. Doctor Who never mentioned anything like that, really. You know, no, no hanky yeah. panky in the TARDIS, the old 80s rule. Um, it's yeah. It, I mean, it is. It, it seems a bit odd for a kids show. Yeah, and it's like yeah. It, the other thing that's weird is because she's the only female character. Yeah. And she has so little to do, <laughs> except get kidnapped. Things ch changed up in the next series. Uh, yes, in the next season, it it gets it changes up, changes gear better. Uh, but we won't say any more about that because we're not there yet. Um, can you do eight episodes? Probably if I spread them over a few nights. Okay. Okay, I think I think the blue and the green is eight episodes. I could be wrong. Uh, hang on, I can check. But as we've got, we've got the Vanishing blue Earth. Blue and the first. green is awesome. Yeah, um, the Vanishing Earth's quite good as well. Uh, it's got, um... Uh, blue and the green. No, no, it's, uh, only five. Really? Yeah, five half ho half hour episodes. Yeah. I wonder if I'm getting mixed up with Sapphire and Steel then. That's you might one. Be. That's one we're going to have to do with a little bit. Well, mm -hmm. I'm do down like for Sapphire it. And Steel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but for the moment, you're going to have to share it out again because I don't have it. Yeah, I'm not sure where it is. Where did we get it last time? I don't know. I can't remember. Um, it yeah. used to be last year. It was on a streaming service. It might uh, be it on wasn't Britbox. one of the main ones, but it was. It wasn't Britbox. It was. I'd have to look, but I googled like Sapphire and Steel Street. It was like Tubby or I something. I think it's like on that. iPlayer. Hang on, hang on, hang on. No, I can't do that just yet. I'll have to look later. Uh, yeah, I can't jump in the TARDIS right now. So, how are we doing? Two stories in a little bit. What are you making of it? Uh, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. it. It is... They obviously made changes between the first one and this one. Everybody got a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> it's yep. it's a little more except for earth, Peter, except for Peter who grew his out. Um, it's a little more early eighties than late seventies. Really, because it's made Although in early seventies. It's just it's feeling it, it's a it's still very, but it's a little less. And I'm not sure, I'm not sure how I, the costumes are a little bit different. The um. I don't know. There was slightly less polyester, maybe. <laughs> um, uh, but but come come on, Ginge's wardrobe is class. That is true. I do okay. <laughs> I like Ginge, but it's weird that he's hanging out with kids. Yeah, that's it's a little a, problem. That like, I actually think he has a thing for Carol. Him? I think there's a guilt thing because of what happened with Jenna yeah. Kaya. I think he's trying there, to look. He sad, knows these kids are going to get into trouble. Carol. So, yeah, but that's pretty sure he, you're a prevert. You're a prevert. No, that's I'm pretty sure he's into her. Well, he's going to be disappointed. I, I I do like that. Like they've got a normal sidekick. 
Yes. Makes sense. Um, I do wish, though, like they set some stuff up. Like they made it clear that he isn't a tomorrow person because they do their little test on him, you know, mm -hmm. mostly to play around. But I wish that they then had that pay off. Like, yes, he gets kidnapped because the idiot captain guy with the crown jewels thinks he is. But I wish he'd like tried to convince him. You see, that, the idiot captain guy, is almost, to me, quintessentially ITV kids television from the 70s. It's not really that serious. Now, I love The Tomorrow People. I adore it. I grew up watching it as a, from a child onwards. I wanted to be a Tomorrow person. But there's a certain level of acting that you will only see in a kid's programme. Mm -hmm. And I hate that sort of acting because I like it's over over the top villainy. I mean, look at Doctor Who. Everyone takes it seriously nine times out of ten. You know, over the top villainy. Yeah, he's eating. He really is eating that scenery. It's yeah. um, but the character yeah, wasn't he, written brilliantly either. So well, no, and it's it's absolutely <coughs> a case of I thought I had <coughs> a partner in crime. Oh no, curse your sudden and inevitable betrayal. <laughs> yeah. Oh, bless you, Washburn. <laughs> I love how Ginge calls him Dracula. <laughs> G okay, the, the, yes, the back and forth between him and Ginge. And plus him, like, is it Peter, the time traveler? I'm afraid is that so. him? Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Who's not blessed in the brain department. And, um... <laughs> and you'll get to see more of that. <laughs> Oh, good. You'll also get um, to see a different time traveler called Peter. You're going to like that. Trust me, you're oh, going to love it. I, I vaguely remember that. Yes. Um, but the Worth listening where, to the commentary where, on. Where the captain is, you know, he's been put... It doesn't help that I'm simultaneously reading The Pirate Planet. Um, but where the captain gets... Because, uh, you know, the captain and the pirates. Moods of madness! Uh but he's he's trapped and he's like let me you know every, he lets everybody else out and he's like let me out i'm on your side now and peter's going to if yeah. you told peter gullible was written on the ceiling he'd look up which version of pirate planet are you watching are you reading uh the target so the straightforward one the hardback's mm -hmm. very good it, it goes in takes a lot of douglas's original ideas and puts them in it's good um, stuff. You know, I love what I'm James about Goss. to say might piss off a whole bunch of people. No, because nobody watches this. But I kind of want to see Russell T. Davies <coughs> take the Tomorrow People and put them into the expanded Who universe. I, know, I can see. <clears throat> I can see it. It'd be perfect. Um, Verdigree, the Paul Mars uh, past Doctor book from BBC Books had a version of the Tomorrow People. It wasn't the Tomorrow People, but, you know, it was the Tomorrow People. They filed the numbers off it. Yeah, basically. <laughs> um, they ordered them off of which. That's an interesting book, <laughs> yeah. which has the Brigadier uh, running a, a supermarket um, and being slightly puzzled because he's... He, it's almost as if he shouldn't be here. And Mike Yates gets turned into cardboard where Joe folds him up and puts him in her handbag. Paul Mars book, everyone. I'm okay with that. Which reminds me, I've got to keep an eye open for any more of the Puffin. Um, Doctor Who versus myths. Well, not versus myths. Um, various doctors are popping up in stories like The Wizard of Oz or um, uh, the story of Camelot. There's some good stuff going on in those books. I like them. And I have to admit, Jack Rayner, the one with The Wizard of Oz almost had me in tears and I guessed the twist beforehand and you got it spot on well done, well done um, really impressed anyway uh, J.K. Rowling has denied the holocaust oh. uh, so we're adding to her charms are we? yes, uh, basically she went and this is public so you can look it up yourselves she basically decided that the Nazis didn't attack trans people and did, and not really attack didn't really attack LGBT people at all. Um, trans people were one of the very first targets. Uh, Germany was leading the way in trans research, 
um, at one particular university. One of the very first book burnings was a load of students burning all the research, trans research. That's when you look at the pictures, that's what you're looking at. Um, but no, apparently this didn't happen, which according to Jewish law, um, or Israeli law, or however you want to put it, um, to deny a part of the Holocaust is to not deny all of it. You can't leave out a group. So, J.K. Rowling, you're a Holocaust denier. Fuck you. Uh, sorry, I, it's quite close to my heart. This You, you know this from past events, Brian. Um, oh, yeah. Could've she could have just written her books. Well, way to destroy. But the thing is, people were starting when they looked at the books and gradually it filtered through. They realised it was a racist. They're racist books because of Gringotts. The goblins are stereotypical, horrible. All stereotypical she had to Jews. do was keep her mouth shut and just rake in. Money. It's funny, you've got all these people, Graham Lynan, the guy who wrote The IT Crowd and um, uh, Father Ted and the like. I can't watch these now, because not because I'm deliberately boycotting them, I'm not, it's just I feel bad watching them. Um, he's gone loopy down down a, a thing. Elon Musk, we looked up to Elon Musk, we thought, oh, this is going to be great. No, we didn't. He's gone completely doolally. You know, oh yeah, yeah. It's it's because they surround themselves with people who won't tell them no. Mm, yeah, no, this is a bad idea. No, you shouldn't be. That's some friends this while you're high. No, nobody wants you to buy Twitter. Somebody, um, I've been asked a couple of times by friends, why do you, you know, why why aren't you more supportive in this case of, because sometimes you need a friend to say no. A mm -hmm. good friend won't just green card you straight the way through you know they'll say no stop is this wise you know everyone needs it's basically caesar thou to art mortal you know it's oh that was a good bit oh that nice bit of chat there boys and girls nice mm -hmm. bit of chat thank you good 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 chat this this oh yes um oh, did you guys do a big finish yeah, I was hanging on. I was, I was gonna go. We just had a very good chat, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah. So let's have an awkward pause just to recover. Ah, uh, ah, uh, commemorate it. So anyway, the ninth Doctor Who. We think. We're not sure. Let's be perfectly honest here. It could be the tenth Doctor Who. The, the one played by Christopher Eccleston. Um, a nice job on audio. Yes. Um, well, we're looking at the new Big Finish box set. Well, it's not new anymore. Uh, but the latest Ninth Doctor box set where he meets Bernie Summerfield. But that's only in the last story. In the first story, he bumps into somebody who seems to be... Well, he's from 1935, but he almost time slips back to years gone past. And there's someone calling out to him, and I didn't listen to all of this, so a little bit take over, please. <laughs> um, I think this is the one I didn't get to either. Hooray! I got to, I did the running men. Let me look at what I did. Um, I did, yeah, the running men and ancient history. Okay. Uh, I didn't get to this one. Now, oh. is that the one with Schwarzenegger? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, we, we've got nothing to, that can tell us otherwise. We've, we've got no actual experience that can say otherwise. So, yes, we can say yes. Well, The Running Man, I did watch that one, or listen to listen that to, one. Well, Go ahead with The Running Man, because I didn't. Um, that one was very, very good. It uh, is set in Halifax. And actually, the someone involved in it, I want to say the writer on Twitter. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not saying this to be RC. Um, I, it's a genuine question, because it's an audio. It could be. Uh, do you mean Halifax up in Yorkshire, or do you mean Halifax, Nova Scotia? In Yorkshire. Thank you. Two different sorts of story. Do you know what I mean? Yes. No, I yes. wasn't being arsy there. I genuinely um, wanted to uh, know. In Yorkshire. And it features very, very heavily. And I think it's the writer on Twitter said, hey, if anybody listened to this and would be interested in actually seeing some of the places mentioned yes. in it. Yes, 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 yes. Right? 
and and got a really positive response and he put up some of the pictures mm. and hopefully there's a forthcoming video mm -hmm. bit which i would be interested in cool. because uh there's very cool things mentioned and i have no familiarity with that location at all so it was it did feel a bit like um <laughs> It felt a bit like Kolchak when they had a really cool setting and wrote a story around it. <laughs> but I don't mean that in a negative way because it was a really... It, it, this is the one that felt a bit like it belonged in the Rivers of London universe. Okay. Um, without giving too much away, there's things that hold energy from the past and echoes of the past. I wish to God. I mean, we know we've got the readings, the, the, you know, the narrated Rivers of London. I wish we could have an audio series. Um, they there was talk about TV for a while, but I don't know if I that's know. still happening. I don't know. I think it would be better in audio. Um, it would it would be great as an audio because mm. uh, Peter's narration is the best thing. About it. <coughs> oh, they got the perfect narrator for it. There's no toys about yeah. it. But I prefer to oh, read yeah. a book rather than listen to one. But if and and dramatization is a whole different kettle of ball games. So yeah. Um, so Running Man was really good, and um, it has a, a really interesting villain because she's a very typical villain in, like, a, a social class setting kind of way, like a descendant of robber barons kind of thing. You know, of my great grandfather built this city I gotcha. and I gotcha. that kind of founding thing. family jobber jobby. Yes, yeah. yes, exactly. Yeah. And and the running theme of it is, yeah, but it was built on the backs of the poor. Yeah, I can see Eccleston liking that. Yes, it's very Eccleston story. Mm. Uh, it's it works really well with the themes. The acting was a lot of fun. Um, there's a chase scene through the city that ties in with the historical um, ideas that they've set up um there was a bit and, and this is a big finish audio thing that when you're in a fight scene there's an awful lot of fight scene sounds that i had a hard time picturing in my head i think they put them in so that when they do the trailers they can write very silly captions which they've started <laughs> to do every they're magnificent whoever does those has been doing the latest um video presentations to you know to, to showcase what's coming up there's brilliant captions oh man this it's stuff you need on a t-shirt it's that good did you enjoy um, it i did enjoy it i did enjoy that one and it none of, uh, at least the two of the three they don't outstay their welcome no they're only an hour long which i think is a good th a three-parter or an hour long I think those are the best formats for Big Finish myself. Yeah, because I I did short driving because I was on spring break this week, so I'm I don't have my normal commute. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was sort of like, oh, I'm out running errands, or I'm driving to a place and then returning from the place, and then I'll finish it when I get home. You know, I got ten minutes left, whatever. The fact that I wanted to continue listening when I got home is a very good yeah, sign. That's very good, <laughs> marvelous. We're going to move on now to the one that I came here for. Um, yes. Ancient history. Uh, Professor Bernie's surprise Summerfield. I hear something. My phone just decided to describe ancient history to me. But not the big finish play. Oh, no. <laughs> that very, very the demon in your house is moving into your phone. That, that, that was unexpected. It's a very dark... Well, you did say the word surprise. Yeah, man. So, um... Anyway, so when are you going to tell the viewers that you actually live in the famous Black Monk house that was in uh, I'll tell you, when, Ghost I, Watch. when I've got my um, Ghost Watch wasn't real. Um, when I when I've, I put my list of desirables and whatever for the, the estate agent, a haunted house is going to have to be part of it. 
Okay. Yeah, but then you got to Just to keep Sapphire things interesting. In. Well, the thing is, as long as I've got a loft, because Adam likes, if ever I have a loft, loft, Adam goes up into the loft to check for dead bodies. I'm serious. This will happen. Um, it's Adam. Yes. When you walk into a house and it goes, get out. It's a shame you can't you stay badly, there. You, you need to see the show that goes wrong. Or the goes wrong show as it was on the telly. There's there's a haunted house. Get out! Yeah, yeah. You need... It's it's coarse acting at its very finest. Um, <clears throat> right, where were we? Oh, yes. Uh, Benny's is on a dig. Ancient history. Benny's on a dig. Um, and she's doing it the old-fashioned way with trowels and little brushes and whatever. Whereas back at base camp, they're using all the latest equipment to f- find the objects in the rock and then beam them out. Yes. Which to Benny is just, oh my God, what are you doing? Uh, there's a, an unusual professor, um, Professor Ar- um, what was his name? Arthur Fandango. Um, that's it, Arthur Fandango, who's running around a little bit and he vanishes. And, and yeah... The thing is, they've got this room where they can visualise what it was like in the past. And somehow that gets linked with the past, with all these very alive and technologically advanced warriors. You can see where this is going. Mm -hmm. Um, And for some reason, two million years ago, the TARDIS is is there. Being worshipped, I believe. Uh, Yes, quite. Which she probably approved of. Um, Professor Arthur Clem Fandango, oh God, um, is in fact the Doctor, the Ninth Doctor, and they finally meet. Benny susses out there's things wrong, and she's in earshot of things like Last of the Time Lords and, and whatever, but she doesn't dig that much. Which is a shame, because I really wanted a deep scene between... Because if anybody would be able to do it, it would be Bernice. You know, she's been very close to the Seventh Doctor. The Eighth Doctor she gets on well with. This would have been the perfect opportunity for him to unburden himself. Yeah, but she tries to initialise that scene and sh- and he shuts her down oh, twice. Oh, yeah. yes, yes. Because he uh, wants a lovely... He It's very Ninth Doctor. He doesn't want to talk about it. He wants a lovely, happy, fun... Adventure. I mean, yes, we're running about... It, it, yes, yeah. he wants an adventure with a friend. Yeah. And he didn't call himself John Smith because he knew that she She'd would suss that, out. yes. Um, but... Uh, and I do like all her complaints about this is not proper archaeology. Yes. Like It was very, like, Phil Harding from Time Team. If you say so. Um, I, Yes, it's... It's great. I deeply enjoy Time Team. Um, but uh, I also kind of wish River Song were there. Ah, now, funny you say that. The next box set is him in River Song. Ah, so that'll be great. Um, though I still, for, as for, for space and time traveling archaeologist, I still prefer Bernie Summerfield. The story where the two of them finally met was lovely. Oh, the bitchiness on display. Oh, man. And then they got presented with the Doctor's latest companion, who was essentially, it wasn't Mel, but it was perky, happy, ready to help. And And there's the two of them looking aghast at it. (laughs) It's, ah, that was a good story, that was. Yeah, very sad story. But having Benny and River, it it had to happen at some stage, because River's essentially Bernice. It's just she's got the the love angle. Yeah, and and different baggage. Yes, she's a psycho. Benny's yes. an alcoholic. But also, I think together they fight crime. <laughs> yes, coming to ITV Four soon. <laughs> she's a psycho. He's an alcoholic. Together they fight, fight crime. Summer villain song. <laughs> New on the CW. The Song of Summerfield. <laughs> oh, dear me. I enjoyed um, this, and it proved something to me. The yes. Ninth Doctor is better with a companion. 
Oh, yes. Much better. He was better when he met Alistair. Brilliant, yeah, sorry. Um, and he's better in this situation, meeting... Um... He's better with a companion. He always picks the underdog. Mm. Uh, I like him with a companion who already knows him a little That's bit. What I, that was what I meant, yeah. yeah. And we don't have to have the here's all my stuff scene. But more like a, I, I already know you. And I know what you're up to. Sorry, sorry, and sorry, I sorry. Hang on. Oi. Yes. Oi. Okay. Oi. 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 Right. All right. Okay. I've I never did. heard an okay. American say that before. <laughs> oh, I, I have been known, and I blame this entirely on Dave. Yeah. 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 To Oi. yell it down my school hallway <laughs> when there is shenaniganery happening down there. I love that word. Shenaniganery. Of a foolish kind usually involving freshmen and 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 did they listen uh they do because they're baffled <laughs> <laughs> they don't know why i'm yelling at them or what it's supposed to mean <laughs> i just have a question mm. <laughs> every year how many freshmen do you guys have to fish off the roof um i don't i've never fished any freshmen off the roof i have we we did have a middle school incident with kids on the roof, um. And uh, yeah, that one was a that one was funny until we realized it was a mental health incident that was happening, and then it wasn't uh, funny anymore. Oh, um, it wasn't a. There's a pool up there. No, no. Uh, Don't but, jump um, off the roof, Dad. You'll make a hole in the floor. Mother's just planted petunia. I Sorry. do tell them, and I want to make it clear, I do not want anything to happen to any of my students. Well, of course not. Um, Except no. great do... and wonderful things. Exactly. Positive things. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do tell them things like, please do not tilt in your chair. You're going to fall on the floor and break your face, and blood is very difficult to clean up, and I do not want to tell, my, tell your mother that you're coming home broken today. Yeah, that was a, that was a thing at our school. Couldn't lean back yeah. on your chair. Um, well, yeah, it's a very sensible thing as well. As an no, adult, you need to threaten them. Please do not taunt the freshmen, or we will make you watch hackers. <laughs> uh, no, I tell them. Look, you have to. Th there's freshmen across the hall because there are. There's there's class of freshmen across the hall, and I say um, you need to set a good example for them. And this is foolishness, and this is not a good example. So we need to. Up uh, our game. Uh, just to change the subject, because my ADHD's gone. Oh, Bing. Um, do you ever see anything called Kung Fuhrer? No. No? Now, Dave would have loved Kung Fuhrer. We're going to do uh, that next week. I it, suspect he would. Um, yeah, it's... I think it was a Kickstarter to make the most cliche-ridden awful 80s cop movie going they look they managed to get david hasselhoff in to sing the theme tune oh Mind kung you. fury kung fury yeah kung fury yeah kung fury yeah yeah you said kung fury i was getting one of the characters mixed up with the title how strange kung fury yeah triceracop triceracop yeah he's my hero triceracop Okay, we're going to do that because Lilibet's face is a picture. In fact, I'm almost right. tempted to see if we should do it, do it as a live reaction. Run. Would you be up is, for that, Lilibet? Uh, it would really depend on the time of day. Oh, we can sort that out. Don't worry, we, uh, we'll work around you. Well, I say we. I can work around you. I don't know about Brian, <laughs> but. Um, <laughs> Might I suggest having to run. Might I suggest having a glass or two beforehand? Oh, uh yeah, I'm on medication where that We're on we're on full sharknado alert here. Okay. All right. It's um it, it's a it's a sharknado F5. <laughs> and that's in the enhanced Fujita scale. Mhm. Mm They're actually having a look it, at the future. It, it could relocate your house. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, dear. It's that bad. But it's deliberately, 
that bad. And you have to well, take your hat off every the single Where decision they've showing? made. Uh, it's YouTube. Oh, oh God. Um, of course it's YouTube. Why, why would it be anything else? Oh, the back of my knee's very arthritic. Lovely. That's where we are Tell tonight. Tell the cats to give you a little massage. Uh, Socks does. Socks has become a right little lap cat. It's When I get home, now I've only got three three pets. I've got Trixie on my, down my left side on, on, on the couch. And then Chestnut, who will splonk on my lap. And then Socks will work his way in because he's more interested in kneading and suckling the fleece. And the purr. Oh, God. Not as grand as Charlotte's, because not, nobody would beat Charlotte's. But um, it's quite lovely. Yeah. So, um, anyway, what did you make of it in the end, this nice Dr. Box set that we managed to not listen to? Too bad. Okay, do you want to... Say that again, because your mic... I'm sure your oh. microphone is... Um, I think the setting is cutting you off. Your I voice recognition. The settings, I know. But, Don't worry. Don't worry. Uh, it's one of those things. Two out of three. I, two out of three ain't bad. Fair enough. On this box set. Good meatloaf song. Uh, true. Um, and I did, I did actually really enjoy The Doctor and Bernie's. Um, it was a lot of fun. It was a good adventure. It, there was a nice amount of conflict, mm. both on the, oh, no, there's bad guys coming. We have to run and figure out the situation. And uh, the people funding the study, finding out what was behind that and what their goals were. Fairly obvious, that, yeah. It, greed. Yeah. I mean, it boils down to greed. Weapons development. Wait, and, um, right in Capruni. The, the sidekick, Bernie's sidekick, I liked her a lot, too, yes. whose name I don't remember. She was very faithful to Benny. Yes. Yes. Okay, so um, um, that went well. Do you want to know yes. what we're doing next week? What are we doing next week? Well, it's 40 years of Colin Baker as a doctor. So um, we're going to look at the twin dilemma. Okay. And for Big Finish, we're going to be listening to the Quinn Dilemma. Oh no. Is this the mighty Quinn? There's five of him. Of five course there Colin are. Baker doctors. It's a lot of Colin Baker. That's a lot. Well, even more. I'm really me. sad that I don't listen to the big finish stuff anymore. <laughs> I'm so oh jeez. <clears throat> Chucky Darn. And uh, we're doing the next Tomorrow People? Yeah, which is The Vanishing Earth. The Vanishing Earth. Which has got Kevin Stoney which in it. Which is the last of season one. It's got Kevin Stoney in it, Dalek's Master Plan, The Invasion, and, uh, of course, okay. Revenge of the Cybermen, which I watched recently again, because I, I, I don't know why. Oh. It's one of my comfort ones. Oh, speaking of Tomorrow People and Doctor Who connection. Yes. On the Tomorrow People... DVD yes. in their little, which are so cute. It's little text boxes that you scroll through. It's yes. so sweet. Yeah. Um, they mentioned that in that in the Medusa strain, some of the music was from Doctor Who. Ah, uh, no, not per se. Um, it's library music done by Brian. It was Hodgson. used in Doctor. Who. It was used in Doctor Who, for example, in Inferno. Um, but it was library music. Anybody could go. I've actually got a CD of it somewhere. Um, it's good. It's good music. It, was, it, it sits in there. I mean, it's weird. It's, it's typical radiophonic electronic stuff. But yeah, um, same stuff was used in certainly in Inferno and possibly others. Yeah, it listed. It wasn't Inferno that it listed. It was something else. But I, they were like the Doctor Who from the previous year or something like that. But that I knew it at the time, and then Inferno. I, um, I would have recognized Inferno. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But Inferno's really good and memorable. Yes, we know you love Inferno. Depressing. I, I do. I really do. It's depressing, but it's good. Now, I must apologize about getting us to do the Twin Dilemma, but it has to happen. 
there have to be redeemable. The only reason we're it. doing the twin dilemma is because it rhymes You're with so the quin dilemma. You're so optimistic. You know, we could have just gone for the quin dilemma and left it like that. I was thinking about going for the invasion because um, we ha we haven't done the invasion. Um, but that's eight episodes as well. So, um, yeah, anyway, that's what we're doing. What are you doing next week, Lilibet? Uh, well, back to work tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So, 5 a.m. again. Hey. Condolences. Love you, 5 a.m. so much. Um, uh, let's see. I think just a pretty normal week. Um, but this starts our final term. Mm. Mm. Uh, and so, for my students, we've got th this last little bit of March and then all of April and then like two weeks in May and they're done. Mm. So we're in the final real push mm -hmm. before um, graduation. So I think some of the classes may be starting our unit on the Gothic, which will be fun. Ooh, Mary Shelley? Uh, we might look at, ex uh, we're going to look at excerpts from a few different things. And then I think we may read Dracula. Nice. Or at least chunks of it. Yes. Something that was pointed out. You know when people say, oh, you don't want to be a Frankenstein, and then go, no, it's Frankenstein's monster. Frankenstein was the creator. Who was really the monster? He was the real monster. The, oh. the creature was actually really quite sweet. And um, the victim. Well, okay, he is a victim. I will agree on that. But also he's a monster too. Not because he's created from bits, because that's not the problem. The murdering a whole bunch of people because you're mad, that's a problem. I thought that was American. Okay, you've been in rush hour traffic. <laughs> you had a missile launcher. <laughs> Brian just, just makes saying. my point for me. Um. I'm just saying, if I had a missile launcher, there'd be a hell of a lot less people driving. Ah, uh, dear Very Brian, what are you in the passing lane? What are you doing next week, Brian? Oh, sorry, Lilibet. Sorry. Well, I, it just related to rush hour traffic. I've long oh. maintained that there should be an upper level of point to point traffic. I'm not getting off on any of these places in between. I'm just going from point A to point B very fast. And people who wish to go to point C, which is points in between, can be on the lower decks. We, we, we have them called bypasses. I think it should be illegal if you're going slower than the people in the passing lane for you to get out in front of them and thereby force them to go slower. Well, we all know the left lane is for crime. Yes, it's exactly. For crime. Yes. 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 The left lane is for going extremely fast. Uh, and Minimum just speed, crime. sorry, uh, miles an hour. Of course, hang on a second. Left lane in America is actually the fast lane over here. Right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Right. Well, I mean, South Florida, if you go less than 80, they will run you over. Yeah. I'm assuming this um, is miles an hour. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. You, you um, have sensible un units. In Dave that Barry uh, did used to say people in South Florida dr drove according to the laws of their previous countries, <laughs> regardless of the current traffic laws. Yeah. Ah, oh, dear. Mm -hmm. I believe it. I might be driving up yes. to London at the end of the month. Oh, I told oh, you, didn't I? That the whole all things electric up at the Exeter yes. Centre. Yes, you've mentioned that. Yes. Leave me alone. I'm elderly. You can have an there, adventure. There. Brian, what's happening She's next it? Saturday? Oh, uh, next Saturday. Sounds enthusiastic. I in the episode, as I mentioned earlier in the episode, yeah, we have another good. episode of Tales of the Astro Sea over on the Thaco Gaming Channel. That's at 3 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. 8 p.m. UK. 8 p.m. No, 7 p.m. I do apologize. 7 p.m. I do apologize. You're right. 7, 7 p.m. Yeah. Because you're going to show up an hour later and then, you know, we're all going to I'm going to try pissed. and get away with it. Let's put it that way. Um... <laughs> We'll kill you. We kill you. We kill we you kill so you. dead. You wish we didn't kill you so dead. <laughs> what are you doing next week, Brian? Um, eh. apart from coming up with a new combat scenario, uh, actually, I have two audiobooks that I'm listening to. Oh, that's Ooh. nice. At the same time, 
Well, no, no. Um, one head first, one sequential. Head One's a one is a uh, sequel to the other one. So mm-hmm. I'm trying to get through the first one to this, get to the second one. Um, they're to- next. I'm listening to the Necroscope series by Brian Lumley. Ooh. Yeah, your students should not be anywhere near this. No, no, it, no, no, they shouldn't. No, no, no. no. I, Way I, too many tentacles. Lots of vampires, if I remember rightly. There are vampires in it. There is espionage. Um, yeah, it's been many, many years since I've read one. I think I still got one. Somewhere. I'm listening to it for the, the first time somewhere. since high school, like freshman year, because I've wow. read them all in um That'll be in interesting. junior high. That explains a lot. Because you've, uh, <laughs> you've got sharper critical faculties now. So it'll yeah. be interesting to see what and you think of it. I'm realizing there was a lot of thirsty in this book. A lot of thirsty. Okay. If you know what that means, please don't hesitate to get in touch. No. No, no, you don't want that. Right. Those who do know what it means, know what it means. Okay. We'll leave it at that. Um, if you know, you know. Next week, I'm doing nothing. I hope. <laughs> oh, It'll and make I a also might be week. working on a new model. I got this the other, last month. Oh, ah. hang on. I know so it's Ghost I'm Rider, but what's on a new the... model. I know it's Ghost Rider. But what does it actually... Ah, a crisis... Marvel Pro- Crisis Protocol. Oh, I don't know what that is. It's a miniature game. All oh, right, okay. Does Ben Grimm live? Um, possibly. Hmm. Depends on if I get a hold of him. All right. Okay, I think it's about that time of the evening where we go away. Like I say, next week... Uh, sorry, in two weeks' time, I do apologise. Um... Two weeks time, the twin dilemma, the quin dilemma, and the vanishing earth. Uh, yeah, I'm my own worst enemy, aren't I? Um, yeah, we blame you for many things. It's wise. Uh, I blame Madge Arwell, though. Let's be honest here. It's okay. Yeah, Leave Madge alone. it's a vicious. Not circle. what? It's a vicious circle. I'm telling Sinister. You said Madge that. Alone. I'm telling Sinister. Oh, well, you said fine. that. She Good knows luck. what she did. Good luck. Next time you come over, we'll get Sinister down here, and you, can, you, you and them can. Oh, you can have it, have it out over Madge Arwell. Um Doesn't matter. I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> right then. Say good night, boys and girls. Bye. Good night, boys and girls. To our loves. you want for all that you believe it's right to fight for what we want to live the way we please as long as we have done our best then no one can do more and life and love and happiness are well worth fighting for they're well worth fighting for At least one of the Ice Warriors was not John Levine. <laughs> <laughs>